Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, uh, we both, Dr. Chang and uh, I, to come together, give our presentations. I just only very few words uh, give a very brief introduction uh, to you from the uh, medical view of medical side. So follow is by uh, Dr. Zhang. Uh, you know, hist uh, histopathology is the most important field of the uh, medical diagnosis. So uh, pathology diagnosis is a final diagnosis, a so-called the golden standard uh, the, for the medical uh, treatments. So uh, from this view, no pathologic diagnosis, no treatment. So it's a very important uh, uh, field. So another uh, uh, field, uh, another problem is a shortage of the uh, training uh, trained pathologists, especially in, in China, is a, is a big population. Uh, so it's, uh, you, you can see in the United States, in the Japan, in the China, and in the other countries, so uh, China has uh, very few pathologists to the clinical uh, service. So, it's, uh, uh, so the problem is uh, uh, low incomes, but high risk professions. So this is uh, also is a problem. So, uh, so uh, we hope to uh, set up, I hope to establish some uh, method, if possible or not, some method to screen primary to differentiate uh, eight to the benign lesions or malignant lesions. Uh, so generally the, uh, the biopsies from the patient. For example, pancreatic cancers or lymphomas are also, so you will take the tissues and make the slides, uh, but pathologists use the microscope to make a diagnosis come together. But, but a skilled, a skillful uh, pathologists can make a diagnosis by themselves. Uh, so it's a, it's a very, uh, very, very tough task. So if we can find some uh, uh, some method to screen, we can reduce, reduce the uh, uh, hard work times or we can reduce the number of pathologists. Uh, another uh, uh, the field in the futures at the moment, uh, the individualized medicine is very popular uh, in the Western country, even in China. So the, uh, the Personalized medicine is associated with the genetic alterations. So we, uh, we guess that you know, it's uh, uh, genetic alterations may be associated with uh, morphologic changes. So if we can find the, the association between the genetic alterations and the morphological changes, so uh, maybe the next few years, we just only do the a morphological diagnosis to replace the molecular uh, diagnosis. So this is a, a molecular diagnosis is more cheap, more easy compared with the molecular diagnosis. So this is also uh, we hope to solve the problems. So please. Great. Yeah. So thanks, Professor Lai. So um, as you can see, um, there's actually a lot of um, data that comes with uh, a central histopathology scan. So just a so show of hands, like how many people here in the room have gone through a colonoscopy? Surely some of you have. Okay, so uh, I just checked on Wikipedia. Uh, so it's basically uh, US actually, government actually recommends if you are over 50 years old, you're supposed to get it once every 10 years. So, um, so it's something that every one of us will probably go through uh, someday in our life. So, uh, so you definitely want to have the best quality sort of assessment you know, when you go con to un uh, undergoing such a test. So what we want to do is essentially use computer to help the doctors to make a better diagnosis. So you can see that we have three tasks here. So one's classification. So we want to identify whether a set of uh, cells is tumor cells or not. And then we also want to segment essentially on a big histopathology scan. 
you want to identify the region where the tumor cells occur. And then as Professor Lai mentioned, if we can, we also want to cluster also different types of cells. Because even, even for tumor cells, there are actually various types of tumor cells. So we can actually separate them out and cluster them. Then we can actually do a lot of interesting research. For example, uh, just like what he was uh, describing, morphological studies and whether certain type of cells are more common for certain type of disease outcome. And then you know uh, better treatment and more personal treatment for that patient. So there are a lot of approaches for doing that kind of machine learning based uh, classification. So on, on, the, on the left, it's unsupervised. So unsupervised, basically, you just do no labeling of the data. Because as uh, Simon mentioned earlier, it's actually very expensive. I mean, there are very few pathologists, as, as you can see from the chart we had before, only two per 100,000 people in, uh, in China. So, so they are very busy. So there's not a lot of them can actually help label the data. And then uh, there's also supervised, which is a very expensive method. So what we're proposing here is using the weekly supervised method and using that to help us to label data only as much as necessary, and then we can learn based on the uh, training signal from the pathologist, and then using that, we can actually train up an automated system. So just to give a more intuitive understanding of the, um, of the concept, let's pretend that we actually want to discover um, carnal fish. So I'm sure a lot of you have watch, uh, watched like, uh, Finding Nemo. So, so basically on the bottom, you can see that there's a lot of clownfish in the video. On top is basically both the clownfish and also the carnal fish, which are the, the fish with the black and white stripes. So you can imagine that if you want to train up a system that will identify where in each frame a carnal fish occurs, it will be very expensive to hire someone at 30 frames per second to go and label each frame and say, this is the area where it is a carnal fish, and this is the area where it's a clownfish. So what we want to do is we use something called multiple instance learning, which is a, a, a weekly supervised learning approach that allows you to essentially just tell the computer I'm sure in this frame there is, uh, let's say, carnal fish. That, that's a positive instance back. And then in the, in the bottom, negative instance back. So I'm sure in all these frames there are no carnal fish. So just by doing those so high level labeling, you can actually use a, use a system to train a classifier to help identify. So looking at tumor cells, it's very similar in terms of analogy. So on top, we basically have cancer pathology scans. So you can see even in the cancer pathology scan, there will be regions that are normal, which are like marked in green, and there are regions that are red, which are or the cancer cells. But on the bottom, we also have uh, non-cancer images, which are basically totally um, sort of uh, normal cells. So by doing this, it's very easy for pathologists just at a high level to say, yes, there are cancer cells, because they can actually do a quick scan and say there are cancer cells in the top scan, but on the bottom scan. But they don't have to spend the time to actually label you know, essentially pixel by pixel where the tumor cells are. And then we use that to train up our system. So just to give you a sense of the scope of the problem, um, one of these slices can be as big as 200,000 by 200,000 um, images. You can see that that's a 40 billion, 40 billion pixels. So it's, it's, so it's actually a lot of uh, pixels. So it's just to get, get a sense of the, um, the complexity of the problem here. So you can look at the video on the bottom right. You can see that you can take an image and then you can zoom way into it. And it's very nice in the sense that you can, if you zoom into that 40 times, you can actually see the cellular structure. So you can see that for a trained pathologist, there's actually a lot of signal in there. But then again, there are so many images and so many, so many data that we have that there's no way that there's enough pathologists in the world to actually go look at every single image cell by cell. So we want to use machines. And it's so much data that even a single machine will not be able to handle a, a, even a slice of image like that, right? Because it's uh, 40 billion pixels. Most uh, servers you have today do not have the type of memory that can handle that kind of images. So what we are using is multiple instance learning. So today we'll be presenting the uh, multi uh, parallel, parallelized multiple instance learning. So we started with multiple instance learning uh, a few years ago. And then uh, last year, Amikai, we presented the multiple cluster instance learning. And then today we'll talk about the parallelized multiple instance learning. So the basic idea is we can take images from, uh, from our research data set and then we can actually you know, slice them into uh, slices, and then you can have uh, basically positive bags, which are basically images with positive examples, and then also negative bags, which are basically images with no tumor cells at all. And then you can parallelize it across a group of servers, and then just run it, uh, sort of parallelize, and then uh, sort of summarize the result later. So you can see that we actually ran this on a Microsoft Windows HPC cluster with 128 compute nodes. And each one has uh, two, pro two uh, quad core processors and then 16 gigabyte of RAM. And then uh, this is a very sort of embarrassingly parallelizable problem. So we can utilize this to uh, train up a very complicated system. So this is our training set. So we had uh, over 1,000 images 
you know, so at the resolution of roughly 10 billion pixels per image. So we had a total of more than six trillion pixels in, uh, in this data set, right? And then this is actually in collaboration with Zhejiang University with Professor Lai to, uh, to get the data that uh, essentially has the labeling, the high, high level labeling uh, on whether this is uh, tumor cells or not. And then also uh, they are also labeled in terms of like the different type of tumor in, in the tumor cell regions. For example, there's MPA, PTA, MA, SRC. And if you're interested, that's the expert. So you should ask him at the break uh, what these uh, different cancers are. So after that, we can do the downsampling and then we go through the process uh, and essentially train up our system using some uh, sort of standard uh, computer vision sort of uh, features like uh, called histograms, SIFT, HOX, et cetera. And then we do cross-validation. So this is the result. So you can see that um, on the far left is basically the original image that we see. And on the far right is basically the ground truth. So this is ground truth uh, from, from the labels by the pathologist. So you can see that as we progress from a few years ago to last year to this year, we're actually getting better and better at essentially sort of getting closer to the pathology's uh, labeling of where the tumor cells are. So the top four are essentially um, a different type of tumor cells in those scans. The bottom two are basically normal cells, so you don't see any marking regions. And then you can see that we are actually starting to also do some clustering. So you can see that um, at, the, um, at, at this column here, we actually are starting to cluster into different type of tumors. And the results is actually compared to other weekly supervised methods we tried, it's actually very efficient. And we can actually run this um, almost at a linear scale up in terms of speed. So just to give you an example, right? So if we vary, for example, from 128 cores to uh, 1,000 cores, you can see that speed is, is roughly eight times the number of CPU power. And the scale up factor is about uh, seven. So it's a fairly nice uh, linear scale up. So it allows us essentially to uh, basically parallelize this more, because now with the, with the cloud, you can actually have a lot more cores. So you can actually go to 1,000, 100,000, et cetera. I mean, just to give you a, an example, we, um, we actually had colleagues in uh, Microsoft Research that worked on gene sequencing, and they did a job where essentially uh, more than 50,000 cores were actually used at the same time for doing gene sequencing. So now with the cloud, you can actually really parallelize and actually leverage the resource of the cloud to do large scale experiments. So here's the result. So you can see that the, the latest result is the, the green line. So you look at the ROC curve on the, uh, sort of the area under the um, detection curve. You can see that uh, it's higher. And then if you look at the overall area, it's also a higher, 0.934. So it's a very exciting in the sense that we have actually turned this problem from a, one that wasn't achievable on just a few servers we have in the lab to something that's doable by leveraging the cloud. And uh, we actually see this as a, a start. We actually are planning to um, post some of these data set in the uh, Coda lab that Simon mentioned earlier, because we'd love to have other people to help to work on the same data set and compare approaches and results to see how we can progress together in this very exciting field. So to conclude, we uh, implemented parallel mobile instance learning. We believe that it's a very valuable approach for helping to uh, uh, address a lot of medical imaging problem. One is actually weekly supervised. So just to give an example, we actually could potentially use data that have not been labeled by a physician at all to do research. Because if you look at one set of images are basically tumor cells, the other set of images are non-tumor cells, then you can basically pull these scans from patients where you have exact records of you know, whether they had cancer or not. And then so you can pull those scans and just use the original labels without further sort of annotation by the physicians, essentially as the, uh, the, uh, the ground truth for us to do this research. So that will allow us to really scale up essentially our research because then we are not limited by the number of pathologies we have to actually label the data. And two, if you have so much data, I mean trillions and trillions of pixels, then any server you have in the lab is not sufficient. So we actually are still implementing this parallelized uh, machine learning approach so that we can scale across the cloud. So um, the HPC was chosen because it's, it's very efficient and also it actually runs on Windows Azure. So now with Windows Azure, you can actually essentially run it sort of on, on like a week's time and then after that, you know, run your experiments after a week and then you do an analysis and you don't have to worry about how to maintain or like monitor those uh, extra machines that you're not using for the rest of the time. So it's a very efficient way for us to do science. So uh, thanks a lot for your attention and uh, we'd love to take any questions. Uh, any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, I, I'm just wondering for the uh, multi-instance learning, what's, what's the training size do you need? Uh, so, so, so basically, you need to have at least um, positive instances and positive back. So what, what we need, for example, re recently we have been trying uh, essentially by doing less and less labeling. So, so one thing we can do is we'll take a, take a sample, right? And then we'll say this is image. And then we, we, we know there's cancer here. And then we can do a like, subsample of that image. Right, so let's say it's 100,000 by 100,000 pixels, we can take, uh, let's say, uh, 200 by 200 pixel samples. And then we can actually slice them and then just you know, send a set, let's say, 1,000 or 2,000 in a time as a positive bag. And then so you sort of play the odds and saying, so out of these 2,000, you know, what's the odd that there's be actually no sort of tumor cell in this, right? So, so it's sort of like a flipping coin, you can actually play the odds. So, so we believe that as long as you sort of see the coverage of the tumor cell versus non tumor cell in, in the original scan, and so just do a rough estimate, then you can actually sort of like set the, your sample size to decide how large the sample size you need to do model instance learning. So, so, yeah. so, you, so you mean basically like yeah. you, you start the label is on the entire image, but you are yes. actually training on patches. Yes, exactly. And uh, so yeah. the mm -hmm. patches, even yeah. though it's coming from an image with positive, it may not be a positive yes. patch. In, yes, in model okay. instance learning, you are not required to have every instance in every bag to be positive. As long as there are some instance in the, in the bag that's positive, that's sufficient. I see, that's yeah. very beautiful, yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions or comments? So yeah. the result of research mm -hmm. is actually being deployed for real situation or what's the current stage? Yes, that's deployment? a great question. I mean, our, our dream and our goal eventually is, for, of course, for this to really help uh, the uh, healthcare system. So, so right now we are at the point of essentially just doing a research on, on clustering. So we want to do it I mean, for, for doing the experiments that Professor Light mentioned earlier on sort of doing morphological analysis. So we're at that stage right now because uh, we actually have a lot of data. But in order for us to do the clustering, we need to identify where the cancer cells are and then we can do the clustering based on cancer cells. So, so we are right now using it more as a uh, tool for helping research. But in the long run, of course, we would love to have it on clinical so settings as well. what is a kind of a yeah. technical challenge which mm -hmm. still remained to be solved? for actual deployment. Is there sort of still some problems have to be resolved or? Yes, um, well I, I think first of all, um, it's something that requires a lot more sort of like um, certification if you want to use it in clinical setting, right? I mean in the US FDA has a lot okay. of uh, sort of like very rigorous, uh, rigorous essentially uh, uh, essential milestones that you have hit essentially to be used in clinical setting. So, so I think that's number one, in the sense that as a small research team, I don't think we're equipped to, to essentially go through that kind of process. And two, I think we are still sort of too early to go through that process yet because we feel that I mean, there's still a lot. I mean, for example, even though we have uh, some data from uh, Zhejiang University, I think uh, compared to sort of the, the, the level of data you need to really be sure that it would be you know, good clinically, I think we are still pretty far. And then it's a chicken and egg thing in the sense that if we do not have an approach that can handle, let's say, 100,000 know, so like patients, okay. then, then we can really address the problem. Any other mm -hmm. questions, comments? Thank you very Great. much. I mean, this is a really good uh, example of a cooperation between Microsoft or technical uh, people and uh, medical specialists. So it's quite impressive result. Great. Thank you very Thank you. much. Yeah.